you know, guys, this is, of course, Mr. Number One, George South, in your head.com. And just, you know, there's not old school or new school. There's just right and there's just wrong. All right, and we are back. And now we are joined by actually one of my favorites. And I don't just say that all the time. You might think I do, but I don't. We've got Jake the Snake Roberts back on In Your Head. He's a little, he's got the flu, but he's still coming through for us here on the show. How are you doing tonight? I'm miserable. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> I hate to laugh at your, uh, you being miserable. Well, that's the truth. You know, I, I just thought I'd share some of my misery try to give this to you over the phone. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I heard about viruses over, like, there the Internet. Go. A... There you go, man. <laughs> it's all about the Internet, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Now, you should have a website. That's, uh, was it? No, I have it written down here. Uh, JakeBitesBack.com. Mm-hmm. You can go there and you can find all the, all kinds of information about Jake the Snake. Do you, uh, do you do any blogs or anything on there? Yeah, occasionally. You know, when I see something worthy of talking about or if I'm just in a good mood or if I'm just in a bad mood. <laughs> you know, depends on which way I'm feeling that day, actually. Uh, right. not, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot, man. I'm not a uh, fan of the net. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it takes a lot of time, and uh, the last damn thing I need is another addiction. You know, <laughs> so, uh, um, people do become addicted to it, and I know I would because there's so much information out there, so much BS information out there. Mm-hmm. I would probably take some of it personal, and uh, I don't have time to play personal with idiots. Right. Uh, you got a match going with George South, who uh, actually holds the record here. He's got the longest interview. He was on here for uh, over three hours, I think. And uh, wow. we won't keep you here that long. But that's coming up uh, May 8th in Lexington, North Carolina yeah. for All-Star Wrestling Alliance. And the website is aswarrestling.com. I'll have a link right on the website. Uh, have you ever worked with George South before? I wrestled George South many years ago. And uh, when I first heard about this, I was like, damn, I mean, he's still alive, too. <laughs> <laughs> There's two of us that are still alive. But um, in all honesty... I'm truly looking forward to it because um, George South is very underrated. Mm -hmm. You know, um, not only as a wrestler, but as a teacher. He's taught a lot of young talent out there quite a bit, and uh, I respect anybody that can do that because a lot of these kids, man, it's hard to get in their head when the door is closed. But, uh, George, I do respect, and I am looking forward to it. And I don't know, rehashing some old memories and making somebody else miserable besides us. Huh. We, we've seen uh, George wrestle live uh, pretty often. We see him every year in uh, in Charlotte, and he really puts on a good performance. He's a lot of fun talking with the crowd. And, uh, he works hard. Oh, yeah. And like I said, he's very underrated. Uh, do, you, do you prefer like wrestling the other veterans or the younger guys? Well, you don't really wrestle the younger ones, do you? <laughs> you just beat them up. guide them. <laughs> right. Or you may uh, go out and pull teeth. But you don't really wrestle them. No, absolutely. I'd rather uh, have one of those old timers I can get. You know, somebody who knows what they're doing and we'll go out there and uh, give it a go, you know, and have some fun. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, like, when you were a young guy getting into wrestling, do you think the uh, younger guys were better workers than the younger guys today? Oh, absolutely. Think there's a difference? Well, absolutely. why do you think that is? Because they knew what the hell they were doing or you'd be dead. <laughs> you know, you didn't get in the ring with a. Uh, some guy that had been wrestling for 30 years and, uh, you know, run your mouth and uh, do things that weren't right. Uh, you went out there and keep your mouth shut and uh, you tried to learn, you know, and uh, that's what's missing, I think, a lot of it today is, is the, um, there's just no place to learn for these guys anymore, unfortunately, you know. And uh, what's expected of the guys today is just completely... You know, it's, man, it's just a mess. You know, I, mean, I love wrestling. I've always loved wrestling. And there's a few guys out there that still try to hang on, but there's not many left, man. And uh, it's a shame because it's, it's a dying art. It really is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you said about George Self being, like, a, a good uh, trainer, good uh, teacher for, mm-hmm. for guys. Is that something that you would like to do, or do you think you don't have, like, the patience to do? Or? Well... If they'll, if they'll relax from the death penalty, I might be able to do it but for a while, I guess. <laughs> There's a lot of guys out there who's got a whole damn, damn jobs for the WWE that I'd like to strangle. So I'd have to think about that. You know, I would absolutely love to, to 
teach, man, but uh, it has to be the right time and the right opportunity, and uh, that time is cut one up because I'm retiring this year, so. Yeah, I know. I heard about that, your retirement tour. Uh, is there any like particular reason you picked uh, this year to retire? Yeah, because I'm too damn old to do it anymore, man. I'm 55 years old. I'm a grandfather, and uh, I want to raise some grandkids. And, uh, you know, it's, i got to take better care of myself, you know. Hell, I mean, if I knew I was going to live this long, I, you know, I would have taken better care of myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it's not. Hello. Yeah, he is. We got a caller here. Anyone who calls in, just uh, wait to be called on, and uh, we'll get to you. But uh, who are you? My name is Carlos. I'm from the Bronx in New York City. All right, Carlos. You have a question for Jake? Yes, yeah, sure, I do. Um, Jake, yeah. how you doing? First of all, pretty good. All right. Um, I have a, a couple of questions for you. Uh, the first one is: uh, Would you ever be back in the WWE? Well, never say never. I, I learned that a long time ago, especially in this business. But uh, it's not something I see around the corner now. Okay, great. Uh, my second question is, uh, what what role would you prefer to be in in the WWE uh, from the following? Would you like to be a uh, 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 play by a uh, play by play broadcaster or uh, behind the scenes? Writing oh, definitely right. behind the scenes broadcasting is not for me. Not with this horrible voice. You're kidding me? That I might say what I really think on air. I get in trouble. <laughs> wow. I, I really, I really believe that Big Swim Man really needs to get you back in there because uh, I mean I do enjoy the WWE, but I agree with you. Back in the '80s and part of the '90s, it was a hell of a lot better product than now. Absolutely. And, yeah. I feel the same way, man. And, uh, that, that stuff they that stuff they doing now with Hans Wagner and Santino, Jesus Christ! Yeah, horrible. Yeah. It's like, uh, how stupid can we get before we just fall out of the tree? Well, they fell out of the tree a long time ago. Now, uh, he, had, you know, he asked like uh, what you'd like to do in WWE if you'd ever go back, or I guess any wrestling promotion. Now, you actually did uh, writing and booking for WWE, and yes. you know when the Attitude Era started, like. Um, do you think people realize how, like, I don't know, how much, like, you had to do with that, or how much did you have to do with it? I did quite a bit with it because I love it. I mean, it's something I did way before then. I mean, I did that in the 80s, early 80s, uh, at uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling. I was the uh, the guy that was doing all the writing then. So uh, it's something I've always had a passion for. And um, I have no idea why I've been given that gift, but, uh, you know, it was a gift. I mean, <laughs> I was back there with the Road Warriors, Legion of Doom, and all that silly stuff, and great stuff, and great times, and uh, Ronnie Garvin, even King Kong Bundy, tons of fun himself. <laughs> Big fan of Bundy. All right, thanks for calling in, Carlos. You're welcome. How about a good one? Too. Now, when you were doing the uh, booking, in, like when the Attitude Era was taken off, was uh, Vince Russo, was he there? Like, did you uh, did you work with him at all? I never smelled him, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I didn't. I didn't see this. No. Yeah. No. Uh, he was doing my thing now. I think he was behind the scenes doing, doing writing at the time. Uh, I don't know, writing magazines or something. Like, how much involvement did you have with like the Austin three sixteen promo? Um, quite a bit with Steve Austin himself. You know, I mean, when I first met Steve, he was, uh, you know, he wasn't Steve Austin. Okay. Uh, mm. He was the ringmaster. Boy, I don't really remember that one. <laughs> uh, then he was, well, he was uh, one of the, I don't know, when he was WCW with Pillman, uh, they had a little thing. Yeah, down, the Hollywood Blondes. Here, yeah, Hollywood Blondes. And that wasn't happening either. You know, and I just talked to Steve and said, man, you know, you're trying to be something that you're not. You know, and uh, you got to grab something that you believe in and something that you can ride and something that you can do with your eyes closed. Because he's a great piece of talent. Mm -hmm. you know, his wrestling ability was phenomenal. But uh, he was just trying to do things, and he wasn't. And uh, We had quite a, quite a few long talks, you know. And uh, he certainly did all the damn work, and he certainly worked his butt off, and he certainly earned every damn dime he'd gotten. But um, I was just glad that I was there to help him along the way, man, because... Uh, I remember a point in time when uh, Vince McMahon said that Steve Austin would never be more than the middle of the card. <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, we changed that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> did Did anyone ever say that to you, like uh, during your career, like uh, you weren't uh, maybe you weren't uh, big enough? I mean, you're always a big guy, but you weren't uh, muscular enough, or you didn't have it to to be or anything. Uh, my problem was I was always saying it to myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I always doubted myself. Um, you know, something growing up uh, come along there and just kind of struck my mind and uh, held on to me and uh, really caused me a lot of problems over the years. Uh, doubting myself, my ability, uh, my faith, everything. And, um, you know, things happen as a kid, man, that uh, drags you down the wrong road. And uh, some people are smarter than others, and damn sure wasn't one of them. Because uh, I traveled the wrong road for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people. It's kind of a theme here is uh, a lot of fans online and the people called in saying that uh, wrestling today isn't as good as it used to be. And uh, one thing is, uh, they say like all the the promos are scripted. Do you think that yeah. would have been possible for you to uh, to really been Drake to Snake Roberts or someone like wrote everything you were going to say? Well, it would have been impossible for them to write what I was going to say because I didn't know what I was going to say. <laughs> Right. Mm. Okay, I always did stuff off the top of my head. I always went in there with an idea, but uh, it just flowed. Okay. Right. Again, it was a gift. Uh, I'd like to take credit for it, but uh, I'm just damn sure smarter and higher power than I did uh, came up with this stuff. Mm -hmm. Is there it one promo? Second nature. Mm -hmm. Is there one promo or angle that sticks out to you from your career? There's too many of them. You know, I mean. Um, I mean, I had the opportunity to wrestle a lot of great pieces of talent and um, had the mic time to enjoy it, um, whether it be with DiBiase, with Ronnie Garvin, with, my God, Andre the Giant. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. You know, um, there were some that I missed that I wish I could have had more time with, like Mr. Perfect. Uh, I would have definitely liked to have had a, a feud with him. I enjoyed the time with Rick Martell. Um, I mean, there's not many people I didn't enjoy bad news. I loved being with him out there. I mean, I loved any time I was in the damn ring. That was a problem. I was happier in the ring than out. Mm -hmm. now, you mentioned a lot of different, like, size guys. You know, you mentioned King Kong Bundy before, and, and mm -hmm. then guys more size and smaller. And did, did you, was there any, like, particular style you liked to work with, or was that kind of something you prided yourself on that you could work with anybody from, you know, any size guy? As long as it was solid, I was comfortable with it. You know, I didn't like uh, people that were light-handed, um, people that were easy going through the motions. I wanted somebody after to push, you know. Because yeah. um, the last thing I ever wanted to hear from uh, one of the fans was, oh, that's bullshit, you know. <laughs> Ain't that with me. Because mm -hmm. uh, the day I die, I'll still bust your butt. <laughs> uh I know you do uh, work with uh, Jim Rose Circus now. No, I don't know anymore. Yeah, you don't do that anymore? What, what was that experience like? Is, it, is there a reason why you stopped doing that? Mm, yep. Didn't enjoy it, didn't like it, didn't glad it's over. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll forget about that then. Uh, we get a, yeah, we got a call here from uh, Portugal. Uh, Joel. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Hello. Question. Hello, I have a quick question, just one quick question for you. Um, the move that you invented, obviously, the DDT, um, I have a question for you about it uh, that you probably have been asked many times. Uh, there are like 100 variations of the DDT right now. Uh, the, the move is done from the top rope, outside of the ring, every, every place. Uh, the problem is not many people consider it to be a finishing move anymore because of the fact that it's used uh, so many times and in the middle of matches just, you know, as a break, as like a rest hold sometimes. Um, so my question to you is, as the inventor of that move, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel wonderful. I'll yeah. tell you why. Mm. Simply because when Jake Roberts did it, you didn't get your butt up. Mm. Okay? It mm -hmm. was done, it was over, it was finished. And everybody knew it. Now you got 10,000 people out there doing it, but nobody can beat anybody with it. So what that tells me is I must be a lot damn better than they are. Yeah? Better technique. You know, I don't need a uh, sledgehammer. I don't need to run over to the car. I don't need to jump off the top of the cage and land on my head. I'll beat you out there. Was that something that you uh, re really tried to do to like to protect the move, to make sure that it was always over and was always you know, well, the end of a match? 
bottom line is protecting uh, protecting your credibility is the most important thing. You read that's what's lost today. You know, there's no credibility out there. I mean, everybody does the same damn stuff. They do it all night long. You see the same moves 20 times. Nothing means nothing. You know, there's no... Uh-oh. Oh, uh, yeah. hold on. Let's go to break here real quick. Okie dokie. We'll go to break and try to get Jake back on the line. Listen up, scumbags. I'm Madman Pondo, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. You better listen to it, or I'll come to each one of your houses and kick your ass. All right, and we're still here with Jake the Snake Roberts. Uh, someone was trying to uh, hijack the show, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think your business was tapping your line, man. <laughs> <laughs> the last car, uh, he was uh, asked about the DDT, and something I've always heard of uh, some people said that they compared uh, the way Steve Austin worked to the way you worked, how they would... Mm-hmm kind of put the, the match around trying to hit the DDT, and he'd be trying yeah. to hit the stunner. And uh, sure. Can you see that? Oh, absolutely. It's smart. Mm-hmm. You know, Diamond Dallas Page did the same thing. I think anybody, I mean, I, I remember doing that with Tim Horner back in the 80s with a simple roll-up. I had him roll a guy up two or three times in the match. You know, he might not beat him, but he'd almost beat him. He'd almost beat him. You know, that's what it's all about, building the anticipation before it. You know, it's sort of like... Uh, you know, it's sort of like making love. Hopefully, you don't throw out your best move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Inch, do you have a question from the board? Yeah, I actually have a question from the board. Dylan123 from our board, he wants to know, what was it like working with Alice Cooper? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Except I, I wish he'd been a little bit stronger so he carried the damn snake. <laughs> you know, the snake outweighed him by about 25 pounds. And, uh... You know, he's such a handsome devil anyway, you know. <laughs> you know it was great, man. Are you kidding? I grew up uh, listening to Cooper, man, as a kid, you know, in the, in the 70s. So, you know, it was like you know, a dream come true. I couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, you, you talked about uh, listening to Cooper, and so they talked about uh, promos earlier. I always would kind of mark out, like, uh, in your promos when you would, like, uh, say lines from different rock songs. Absolutely. Uh, that was good Absolutely. stuff. Was like uh, any particular artist that you preferred to do that with? Well, Ozzy's great. Um, Stones are great. Uh, the Who. Um, I mean, the, the smart man knows where to steal his material. <laughs> this is good stuff. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter if it's Johnny Cash. I mean, or Ten Inch Nails or whatever. It doesn't matter, man. It could be the damn Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be, but not for me anyway. Maybe for Cousin Elmer or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a brain fart. Do you think that helped them, too? Like, people would hear that, and maybe they Absolutely. wouldn't know exactly where they heard it, but, you know, they would... They don't know exactly, but they remember you. they heard it before, so therefore their minds are green with what you're saying because they recognize it, they've heard it before, their head's nodding, and you can go anywhere you want to from there. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you think about the WWE DVD? Uh, Pick your poison. Oh, it was fair, fair at best. Yeah. I think it could have been a lot better. I think there's a lot more footage out there. I think they could have gone in depth. I think it could have been, been much more, much more than it was. And uh, therefore, I guess that's the reason I got to do a book now and just uh, say what I think. Yeah. Are you doing a book? Yes, I am. Oh, I'd be, I really look forward to that. And it'll be. Um, thick, and it'll be in-depth, and it'll be from my heart now. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I, I know on the uh, on the DVD, when you were talking about when you went to WCW, and I think it was under Kip Fry at the time, and then uh, by the time you actually got there, after like the 90-day yeah. clause, uh, Bill Watts was there. Yeah, like, buddy. What kind of promises like did they make you like uh, originally, before Bill Watts took over? Um, well, let's just say, I'd have probably been the richest wrestler ever. <laughs> and um, after Mr. Watts got there, I was one of the other poorest wrestlers ever. <laughs> uh, was there any like? Uh, did they talk about like winning any titles or like where you'd be on the card? Uh, I don't or care like about titles, man. Yeah. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? I, something else is going to tear up my damn luggage. You got a damn snake <laughs> carrying around already. You know, it's sort of like hacksaw. We had the two by four, the robe. And all that stuff, man, nobody wants to carry on. <laughs> I don't need a title to say I'm good. Mm-hmm. What the hell? Did you come to see the belt or did you come to see me? 
Right. Now, I know they've been showing some Smoky Mountain wrestling on a WWE mm-hmm. Classics lately. And mm-hmm. I, like, I watched some stuff, and you were wrestling Tony Anthony, Dirty White Boy, yeah. and you did the DDT on Dirty White Girl. But uh, what did you think of Smoky Mountain and uh, Jim Cornette? Um, it was promising. Uh, I enjoyed it. Um, wish it could have lasted longer. Um, and, uh, you know, these are the guys that I grew up with, man. You know, uh, Rock and Roll Express. Uh, you know, there's some great talent, man. Great Buddy talent. Landell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess uh, you wouldn't agree on great talent for Buddy Landell. Well, I, I'm not saying I'm not saying anything about anybody, man. I'm just saying it, it, he's up the top of my list. No. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Barbie, did you have a question? Or enter from the board? Yeah, I have one from the board, actually. Playboy Don Douglas, he wants to know if you would ever have any interest in doing the NWA Legends Fan Fest. It's a great price to Absolutely. Steal. Yeah. Sure. Sure, I do table dancers, too. What the hell? <laughs> I've got some bookies for it. Ass, so I'm, 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 I'm going to make it rain for Jake Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any current guys like uh, that you see that you would like you'd like to do something with, or you think maybe back in your prime you could have, like you really did something special with somebody? Oh, absolutely! I'd love to work with Randy Orton. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, really, really like to. And there's a few others, but uh, he's pretty much the top of my list. I think he's got a lot to offer. I think he's got a lot to learn yet. Mm-hmm. Do you think his Viper nickname might be a bit of a throwback to the Snake? Well, I think there's a lot of throwbacks to the snake. You know, every time you turn on something, you can call a viper or a snake or son of a bitch or something. I mean, what the hell? I mean, at least they know where to steal good stuff from. <laughs> uh, actually, a guy that I, I thought you could do a lot with would have been uh, CM Punk. I don't know if you know much about him. I've watched him, but he's not one of my top of my list again. I, I don't know. I, I see something there, but I'm just not sure what. Yeah. Uh, do, do you uh, keep up with TNA? I try not to, no. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, plans I mean, uh, for the Hall of Fame, WWE Hall of Fame? That would be wonderful, man. Are you kidding? Mm-hmm. Are you kidding? Have they ever uh, talked to you about it? No, they haven't. That's, that's really a surprise. No, they yeah, maybe they just don't want me in there yet, man. Maybe yeah. we're, we make a comeback or something, I don't know. Yeah, they, well, they always try to have one big guy uh, in each year, I think. Well, maybe uh, maybe next year or ten years from now. Who knows? All right. Uh, I don't know if you saw this or not, but uh, Incher has, a, I think, a question about Saturday Night Live. Did you see this? There was a skit not too long ago, and they actually had uh, Jake the Snake Roberts on it. Yes, I did. Yeah, oh. I heard, heard about that. That was wonderful. Yeah. Somebody else is making a buck off me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get no credits. Yeah. <laughs> well, everybody know again, uh, May 8th, all-Star Wrestling Alliance, Lexington, North Carolina. Go to Absolutely. ASWA Wrestling. Yeah. You want to explain about that? Yeah, man. This is a um, five-year-old man, you know, little Kate Porter, man. She's got to continue, man. She, you know, she's fighting the fight, man, and I know what it's all about. And, um, you know, anything I can do to pitch him, we're going to do it, man. The show Saturday, May 8th, of course, the National Guard Army here in Lexington. You know, and... Uh, AIWF and All Stars and George South. It's all going to be good. I'll be there early so we can shake some autographs, or shake some hands and do some autographs, man, take some pictures, man. But y'all show up, man, because that's what it's all about. Because if you guys don't show up, you're just going to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to piss off the snake. No, God, no. That's one thing you want. You don't want to hiss off snake. Exactly. Well, thank you for coming on tonight. I know we got thank the flu, and you still came on. You're a good man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, hope you feel better. Uh, I've got to. Can't feel much worse. <laughs> Take we care, just... guys. This is Jim Cornette. You're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com, and you made the right choice.